Hey everybody, this is Dean and welcome to Photo Blue. Today I thought I'd talk about photography file formats, uh, kind of the pros and cons of some of them, what each one is used for. And it's good to know this information just because it gives you a better idea of how to create your own workflow or how best to use the formats in various uh, workflows that you might use. So let's start out with JPEGs. JPEGs are the oldest uh, or one of the oldest uh, formats used for photography. Uh, JPEGs were designed for photography. Uh, they are lossy format. Lossy format means that it compresses it, but it loses information. So uh, you have a choice in JPEGs whether to have uh, really high quality in low compression or really low, lower quality in, in, in more compression. And uh, so the file size gets smaller the more lossy it is and it gets bigger the the higher the quality is so that's something to keep in mind with this format uh, they can be used for many applications including the web instagram and for creating prints uh, they are universally compatible with different photo editors and applications uh, so a lot of times people re require uh, if you need to post something on the web or they they want you to send them a file that they can print they'll require a JPEG or JPEG is one of the choices that you have. Next are raw image formats. Uh, major manufacturers have their own proprietary raw image formats. So Nikon has NEF, Sony has ARW, Canon has CR3, and Fujifilm has RAF. Those are the extensions that you'll see on those files. Most uh, third-party editors will recognize uh, the major brands of raw image formats uh, as well and the major manufacturers usually have a free program that will edit those raw images uh, uh, for free so uh, you can use a uh, camera manufacturer's editor to bring a uh, raw image format out into a format that you can use in a third-party editor if editor um, Raw files capture more exposure information in dynamic range than JPEGs. Uh, raw files are like a negative and they have more, they're more flexible in post-processing. <clears throat> so when you print an image or view it on a monitor, you have to bring down the range t to the range of the whitest white on the monitor and the darkest dark on the monitor or the whitest white on the paper and the darkest dark on the paper. And those are a lot lower than you can actually see in real life. Uh, if you're outside, you'll be able to see really bright highlights in the, in the sun and in the shade, you'll be able to see very dark, um, uh, dark shadow detail. And so uh, with raw files, you can move these ranges around to uh, and interpret how they map to the uh, medium, whether it's a monitor or a piece of paper. Uh, raw files themselves are never edited, but the edits are saved in a separate file or database. So so when you edit a raw file, nothing nothing's being saved to that raw file, basically. And the, the edits or changes are put in a separate file called a sidecar file, or they're put in a database. Uh, so you always want to, if you have a third party um, raw editor, you want to make sure you back up the sidecar files and back up the database that it uses so that you ha have any edits. Because otherwise, if you lose the database or, and or the sidecards, you'll lose your edits probably also seen an XMP extensible metadata platform this is a sidecar um, format it doesn't have image information in it it has image edit information in it uh, and it's, it's a file used by Adobe programs such as Lightroom Photoshop and uh, camera raw to record non-destructive changes to raw files uh, XMP files can also be read by some third party uh, photo editors, for example, on one will read XMP files, but it does not save its information into an XMP. It saves its information into a, a file, which is an XML or text file uh, with the extension dot on one. And so if you edited 
a raw file and made adjustments in Lightroom or Camera Raw and brought it into on one and the sidecar file was there it would read the xmp file bring it into on one and then save any changes into uh, including what it brought in from the xmp into the on one file unfortunately that doesn't work in the other direction so if you have a, a sidecar that's a dot on one it won't go back into photoshop or lightroom it won't recognize that Another file format is DNG, which is Digital Negative File. This was developed by Adobe, and it's an open uh, format, so anybody can use it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a standardized raw image format, and other raw image formats can be converted to a DNG for archiving. A lot of people like to save to a DNG because it's an open format, and they don't have to worry about uh, their camera manufacturer or third-party editors not supporting a particular raw format anymore because DNG is kind of a standard format so so presumably you'll always be able to open a DNG. DNG will, will keep all of the exposure information from a raw file but it may lose some metadata. Some camera manufacturers may put in metadata uh, that's non-standard and the DNG doesn't recognize and doesn't um, save uh, most of your metadata like uh, you know exposure date time and GPS information should be um, saved to the GNG DNGs are slightly smaller than the camera's native raw format we also have PSD Photoshop files PSD is the native format of Photoshop and uh, it, it PSD files tend to be larger than RAW files, JPEGs, and TIFFs. And PSD files save layer, masking, adjustment information so you can go back and make adjustments later rather than starting over. So it will save the different layers you work on, the different masks and such that you use. So you can go back and make adjustments later rather than starting over with the original RAW file format or whatever ever other format you started with. The nice thing about PSDs is most third-party editors will read a PSD, uh, but they cannot write to a PSD or or convert to a PSD. So you would have to convert uh, the file. You'd either have to save it as the editor's native file format, or you would have to save it to uh, another format like a TIFF or a JPEG that other editors can read. Most uh, third-party editors, ha as I said, have their own uh, format, and the problem with those formats are most other editors can't necessarily read those formats or can convert back and forth. So the native uh, formats to other editors uh, you, you may not be able to bring into other editing programs, so you might have to convert it to a TIFF to work in another editor. Editor with uh, with PSDs, you can often bring the PSD right into the third party. So in that direction, it works a little more smoothly. Also, a lot of editors also have plugins for Photoshop that you can open up in in edit within Photoshop using the other editor if it has like some special filter or some special function that you'd rather use than what's commonly in Photoshop. TIFF, Tagged Image File Format. This is also a very old format. It was, was and still is used in faxes. TIFFs are slightly larger than raw files. TIFFs are not compressed. TIFFs lose some of the exposure data from raw files. So it doesn't have as great a dynamic range, but it will retain all of the resolution information. So it doesn't lose any r resolution information where you, where you, which you would typically lose in a lossy um, compression format. And and they actually save every pixel basically since they're not using compression. TIFFs may lose some uh, metadata from raw files as well. Uh, so. If the the camera manufacturer has a particular tag 
they use in it and it's not supported by the conversion program that's using a TIFF, it may not it may not save that. But once again, the typical stuff like exposure, date, time, and GPS should be saved. TIFFs are, are great for producing publications and for printing. Next, we have PNG, Portable Network Graphic. And this is mainly used for the web, and it was designed for the web. Uh, it was intended as a license-free replacement for GIF to display graphics and photographs on the web. GIF... Uh, and JPEGs used to be used on the web a lot, and JPEGs aren't really good f for uh, graphics because of the way they compress. And GIFs weren't good, really good for photographs because of the way they compressed because of their compression schemes. But GIF used a uh, compression scheme that had a patent to it, and at first the patent holder didn't didn't say anything, and people started using GIFs for free on the. Uh, internet and they started uh, different editors supported it and some still do but then when uh, the uh, owner of the patent for the compression started charging licensing fees for gifts they developed ping so they would have an open source and free file format they could use on the web and so that's how that came about gifts and pings both support transparency but jpeg does not uh, so if you need uh, to use transparency this uh, on the web and you have a, uh, have a photograph, this may be the, uh, this is the format you'd probably want to use. Uh, transparency is just like when you remove the background and so whatever you put it on, if you put it on the page, uh, it, it looks like the background behind the person is the page itself. Uh, uh, pings use lossless compression also. Now for some uh, final thoughts and in, in what I use generally. Generally shoot either just RAW or RAW and high resolution JPEGs. Um, RAW you have to edit and save into a format people can use. When you bring RAW into a RAW editor it has a profile that kind of interprets where the colors and the um, the ex the uh, highlight and shadow details go and everything w with jpegs that that's all built in so you can actually give somebody a jpeg and they can use it they can post it right to the web to instagram or the web you can't do that with a raw image uh, so some photographers shoot raw uh, raw and jpeg so they can use the jpegs without having to edit them they can send them someplace and, and use them and that you can even switch the resolution of jpegs that you're using that you save, so you save raw and JPEG. You you might save it at a lower resolution, and if that that works better for you for your kind of workflow or whatever, so that's an option. The other thing about it is while you have it on the SD card, if you have a raw and a JPEG, particularly a high resolution JPEG, it's like one form of backup. You always want a better backup than that, but it's in a sense. If something happened to the raw image and it got corrupted, you would still have a JPEG on that SD card. Uh, usually you want to have, a, if you have a camera that uses two SD cards, you'll want to back up on the second SD card. And when you get home, uh, you want to offload your images right away to your hard drive and have that backed up to a cloud and maybe to another device as well. So you want to make sure you always back up your images in multiple ways. Uh, I use uh, raw images for initial edits in a, in a raw editor and bring it into either Photoshop, Luminar Neo, or another editor for final edits. Uh, then I keep the third-party editor format in case I need to uh, make other edits or export to a different format or resolution. So if I did something in Photoshop, I would save it to Photoshop or Affinity Photo, I would save it to Affinity Photo format. And then I can always go back and if I need to adjust something on one of the layers uh, or adjust a mask or something on it, I can go back and do that for a final. Also, when you have it in that format, you can save it in different formats. Often when people request for photographs, they might, set, might specify 
uh, a particular resolution or a particular maximum resolution. So you may have to change the resolution. And if you have the original third party final editor that you edited the thing in, it's 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 much easier to just re-export that at the format that you uh, need. Another caveat that I would say is uh, Luminar Neo and programs like that. Luminar Neo does not have any sidecar um, files. It saves everything into a database. So you want to make sure you back up your database in editors that have a database in them. And, uh, and also what I do with programs like Luminar Neo is I save... Um, they, uh, Numenar Neo itself doesn't have a third-party format. If it had a third-party format, I would save the image in that format as well. Uh, but it does not, so I usually save the image as a TIFF in that or a TIFF in a JPEG so that I have a final copy of that image in case something happens to the database. Uh, and So I can always go back to those images if I need a different format and change the resolution or the size or whatever or or at least do some editing in it. Uh, I won't be able to do it. It's not going to be as flexible as it is within Luminar Neo itself, but it's just another form of backup. And then those those images, which I've saved in a different format, I save them in an area on my hard drive that gets backed up to the cloud and gets backed up to a, another hard drive. So that's, that's uh, the photographic or the major photographic file formats and how I use them in my workflow. Uh, hope this was useful to you. I'm Dean, and this has been Photo Blue, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like.